Thanks for joining us. This is Men's Talk. Well, I think it's key right now. What these men at Men Talk are saying, I think we're in a really critical season. And you're a father, you're a husband, you've got homeschool programs that's now come into your house and you're either gonna get in good habits or you're going to develop bad habits. We look at the story of Matthew chapter 25 and they run out of oil. And you are gonna be at each other's throats, you and the kids, you and the spouse, you're gonna have so many problems. And lush, you do a very few simple things. Going. <laughs> and the first thing- You know, you do the best you can and you know, of course, you're going to run short on, um, you know, patience. And I, I find that when I run out of patience, I ask other families um, if they're experiencing the same thing and what do they do, um, you know, because you can only take so much, um, you know, stress from everybody screaming um, to, to try to be better. And then you pray and, and uh, we just still fall short on patience. And so, um, but we, we managed to make it and we're, we look at what we have and, and how blessed we are. And, um, you know, so we don't, uh, so we don't end up being um, too overwhelmed, you know? So it's just how you look at things. And for me, um, with the three kids, I try to think of what I can do to, um, to have fun with the kids. The kids need to have fun too. It doesn't need to just be all work all the time. So I'll think of things that we can do together to go and get some, relieve some of that energy and, and then get them focused. Instead of telling them what they can't do, try to tell them what they can do. That's excellent. And, uh, but, you exactly. know, it's, it's yeah. always challenging. So, so I see even, more of the well, this after parable that, about you know, me. I see, you know, Jenny after she spent the whole day trying to keep them in and get, keep them on progress with their homework and with their, you know, everything that they're doing throughout the day. I see the aftermath on the kids, you know, when they've had to sit in their home where they're normally had free reign, you know, before their home was not a class. Their home was their home. They could just be at home. They can be comfortable. They don't have to sit. They don't have to focus. But now their home is serving multiple purposes. And I see the leftover, you know, energy, the leftover chaos, the leftover everything, because they don't have those kids at home with them that they would have at school where they can go out and have that 15 minute recess and let out that energy or have that half an hour lunch, you know, where they were sitting there interacting with their kid, with other kids and stuff like that. Now they're having kid conversations with us as adults. And it's like, we're not kids. It's a little bit of a struggle. It's like, uh, you know, I don't want to sit and talk about Pokemon all night. <laughs> you know, you know, and my wife, after spending all day with the kids, she's craving adult conversations. So like me and her trying to have conversations versus the kids seeing, oh, there's a new person to be able to have a different interaction with. Now we're trying to have a conversation and they're wanting to be in and on the conversation. It's just, it's a whole lot of chaos and it's really easy to run on empty. For males that go to work and the wives have to stay home, there has to be that underlying tension because they're with those kids all day long and that is not an easy job. Like I go to work and it's chaos because everything in the world right now is chaos, but she's got that whole world worth of chaos in her house and in a very small confined space. So I can see easily a lot of households fracturing and a lot of households, you know, that don't have those foundations to begin with having a really hard time yeah, nowadays. I mean, forward. Well, the I, I see that the frustrations, I see the building, and I see a lot of people that are poor and meek in spirit, you know, really that being their outlet, you know, instead of, you know, crying their frustrations to God or crying their frustrations to Jesus, they just unleash, unleash it as anger and violence on their family. I've 100% seen that 
as a possibility in a lot of so I'm, I'm work from home now and uh, use the master bedroom as my office and uh, you know I go out to get a cup of coffee and the kids are you know needing something and the wife automatically is asking me for help but I'm you know working and uh, I need to go back to work I just wanted a cup of coffee I thought about p putting a coffee maker in the master bedroom so yeah. that I could just get my coffee without but um and yeah. a refrigerator and a microwave yes, exactly. leave me alone yeah, well I just you know it's nice to go to work because you unplug from the house and then you come back to the house and you know you can kind of have the two the two worlds separately so I'm um, looking forward when I can do that again but it is nice to just roll out of bed and start working too so there's pros and cons to everything I definitely know that I you know I need to support my wife's you know and tell her what a great job she's doing and you know and to be there for her so I can't really do it when I'm working but sometimes if I catch up with my work you know I, I you know I, I put a lot in I can take some time and and uh, and have lunch maybe take the kids to the park or something and uh, and, and you know kind of help her out because they need to feel that support like I get a lot of pats on the back you know um, at my job when I'm solving problems but my wife she doesn't get the kids don't say good job mom wow uh, that's something really like good. that so I think you know I, I let my wife know you know what a great job she's done and you know just kind of you know, but it is difficult for me to work from home because I like to um, socialize with my buddies and go get a cup of coffee, maybe go for a walk and just unplug and then come back to the house. But um, the uh, the work from home um, is a little rough, but I think with any- Don't transition, assume. It actually gets but people can put on facades, you know, your wife can put on a facade. She wants to see, make you feel like she's she's got everything under control. But there are two types of people. There are people that hurt on the outside and there are people that hurt on the inside. And sometimes in order for that other person to be able to fill themselves back up, they need somebody else to give them words of encouragement. So just talk to somebody. You like, you feel like something's off. Hey, you know, I kind of felt like you're a little off today. How are you feeling? How are you doing? You know, really pay attention to someone other than yourself because Right now, with the world and the chaos and everything that's going on in our houses and outside, around us, I mean, fire tornadoes. I mean, it's, it, it's so insane that you just got to laugh about it. But don't assume that somebody's good because they put on an outside facade. Ask that person. Ask your best friend. Ask your wife. You know, ask the neighbor that is acting different than every other time you've seen them. You know, make sure that people around you are okay. Practical step. That's awesome. Um, well, I like to listen to um, a lot of uh, gospel music, and it just like when I'm working, I put it, I put that in there. It just lets me know that I'm saved by grace, and that you know everything's going to be okay. And uh, and then to help out my my wife who has to help you know, with the three kids, I try not to ask for too much. If there's something that I can do for myself, rather than ask her to do it, I just um, I just step in there. And then I take the kids out for a few hours and you know go swimming, just do something. I know she's gonna appreciate it because she needs the and the kids are gonna have a good time and and uh, and and I really enjoy spending time with them too. But just letting her have some time to just you know let the steam go out and uh, and then the kids to to have fun. Um, and uh, but then you know that gospel music just put it on Pandora on my Christian rock radio station and uh, and just you know. God's in control. It's for his glory that he does what he does. And we aren't going to understand it, but we're just here and uh, praise God. Powerful. Huge. Yes. Your family needs you. They need your love and encouragement. Don't run on empty. You're going to burn out. If you and I don't keep our priorities straight and taking care of ourselves, just like in the airplane. They say the mask will come down if we lose pressure in the plane. But before you help somebody else, put that mask on and make certain that you're okay. Men, take it from these dads and husbands. Make certain that you are taking care of yourself. Don't assume, don't assume that everything's going well just because she smiles and said it was a good day. Go a little deeper. Remember to speak words of encouragement. Take the kids outdoors, play games with them. Make certain that they are enjoying life. 
No, they can't go to the beach and they can't go to Disneyland. But they can spend time with you. Don't criticize. Don't put your kids down. Don't say stupid or idiot or lazy. Now is your hour to build your spouse and your children up. Don't ever forget the family that plays together, the family that eats together, the family that prays together, and yes, the family that even studies together will stay together. Keep your family on a solid rock. I want to encourage you. Keep your family on a solid rock. And remember, don't burn out. Check the oil in your own life. Keep the oil in your lamp. And keep glowing in Jesus' name.